In this video, we're putting up our ceiling panels and our walls, and we're doing it largely without the use of hand tools. This is not our first build, but this is our first build where almost every single cut in here is perfect by a computer. If you are, however, interested in seeing my wife and I convert an 18-year-old school bus into a beautiful tiny home on wheels, subscribe and stick around because we've got a ton of information to share. Well, friends, after a very well-deserved break yesterday, this project right here, no chase, but sometimes chase. I'm kidding. But the ceiling was driving driving us nuts, and we were really frustrated because it's, it's not turning out how we wanted it. But after a day of thinking and trying to figure out how we're going to do it, we're just going to say to heck with it. And stick to plan A. <laughs> We're going to okay. modify plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, by the way, the cat is out of the bags. I finally don't have to hide my bump anymore. Do you see these? Do you see this? Bumps. We <laughs> are. We need your help not only naming our bus and helping us choose the color of our bus, we also need your help naming our baby because we don't know what to name our baby. I know I just said that we we're gonna be working in the ceiling, but for us to be able to do that, we have to frame these skylights. There. That looks good, baby. So we're gonna start with four and four. Okay, friends, I think we have come with a solution. We are cutting four inches from each side, and our leftover cuts, we are putting them in between the seams. So for cuts like the skylight where it may be just a little off one direction or the other, it's just really hard to gauge for a cut like this on the ground. So I figure it's best to go ahead and attach this panel and then using a router to cut perfectly to the edge of it. So that's what we're doing. Show the camera your but I think spring is here 67 degrees supposed to be 72 and that's why we have the bump out I literally look like the <laughs> the drunk guy from Barb's uh, like the Simpsons I don't remember his name so we're going to be working with the garage door open and enjoy a little sunshine and hopefully get the ceiling done today. Last night before we went to bed, Chase was like, okay, we need to have a game plan. 
before we start working. We're wasting time. We're having to trim everything. <laughs> the sound making me driving in the whatever. We're having to like cut, open holes for the lights, put it up. He thinks that we should cut them all. Five sheets left. And then measure, cut holes, blah, 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 all that, right? And then install them all. So that's what we're trying today and see how long it takes us. It's 11.49. Now we're going to be making another cut and hopefully installing our next panel, which it does have a lot of holes, a lot of lights. We had a really good rhythm going and we decided just a few days ago that we were going to change up kind of our bed design for the kids room. That means we're having to, to rethink the lighting situation that we had planned out and encapsulated in spray foam already. Like the lighting is done. Instead of the three lights that were going to be positioned in an L shape, we're kind of thinking now we're going to do six lights like one, two, three, four, five, six. So all in a row. That won't be that big of an issue, I think. We finished the ceiling of the bus and we're already moving on to putting up walls and we're uh, we're doing the walls in a manner that it just tickles my brain. I enjoy it. It's so fun. We're using the CNC machine. Feels like we haven't done much, but it's looking amazing. And we got to a point where we realized that we did our plumbing wrong. <laughs> we didn't do it wrong, we just did it ahead of time. That's what we should have done to start with. <laughs> Dude, are you embarrassed? and they turn nose you were so weird. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna see if it fits the way that it's supposed to. I think it's gonna be alright.
That's a real nice cut. Hot dog. Diggity dog. That looks good. And I bet that dog. The second to last wall is about to go up. I couldn't be more excited about it. We've got some wires to play with. I'm gonna have to get those through. And then I'm gonna have to cut this and get it uh, elbowed in so it can come out of the wall. I'm currently making the last cut on the CNC in real time. And then I'm going to get it installed before going in and eating dinner. But Check this out. Good morning on another day of this behemoth of a build. I just want to start today by showing you something very cool. It's obviously not permanent. Uh, it will be eventually, but it isn't right now. Check this out. Would you look at that? We have lights. I have them all wired up all the way through the living room. I just don't have uh, the primary power fused and connected uh, for the living room right yet. I've still got to put it on another dimmer. What's going through my head right now is I'm trying to figure out how I can utilize a dimmer as well as a three-way switch because we want to be able to turn at least the kitchen lights on uh, from the front and then turn them off from the back as well. But I went ahead to wire these up because where it's so dark in here in the shop, we want to be able to use our lights on the inside of the bus. So it just looks a lot nicer. So like for right now, we're inside the bus and the only lights that I've got on are the interior lights, right? And then when we get back here, then I've got to start using our other lights that we've been using for the bulk of the build. And those are just a little bit harsh. And now it's time to see if the lights work here in the back. I wired in the switch. I popped a fuse in the, uh, the breaker panel, which uh, when the circuit's complete but the fuse is blown or there's no fuse, it lights up red. So that gives me the indication that it's wired up properly, but let's just see. Wow, look at that, holy smokes. I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. I will be back later in the day or tomorrow. We've got things we've gotta to do tonight. I'm probably done with the bus for right now. Keeping this secret from me. I don't want you to be upset, okay? It's time she finally learns. <clears throat> what do you do? Come on, you gotta be the one to do oh it. Oh my God. All right, I gotta get your face over here. You've gotta press the button, but don't be alarmed with what you feel in your hand when you do it. Kid, no. Press the button. Press, the button. Press it. Chase, I'm pregnant. Like it, it's it's low enough voltage. You're fine. No. no, 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 no. I'm scared. Oh, no. I promise. 
Nothing <laughs> happened, Johnny. Be careful with I this know. one and don't touch any of these other wires. Why would you do that to me? Ooh. Okay, now that one. That's it. Look I just wanted that. to give you a little bit of a spook. Oh my god. My heart attack. My heart attack. It is so incredibly bright. In oh my god, we got lights. Look at that. Look at yourself and how bright it is. I know, I look great today. This is good lighting. I feel like this is good makeup lighting. No, this is beautiful. It's time to retire the LED lights over here and get those bad mama jamas out of here because they are always in the way. I have a, how are we gonna keep this working? I know they're connected to the solar, yeah. but there's no sunshine. Yeah, so all of these through our Victron app, hold on, this is, this is a good learning opportunity here. We're only using 1.7 amps total with all of these lights, right? So based on the time estimate, we've got over three days of leaving these lights on 24 hours a day. That's crazy. So we're golden. Some exciting stuff is happening! Finally! All right. uh, I've got to finish wiring in all the other lights today. I was in a rush yesterday. And then we've got to figure out what we're doing here. <laughs> I don't know if we even explained that. Did we explain that? Okay. This is a sconce. No, 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 no. <laughs> No way, Jose. Uh, truthfully, there's two problems. First problem is the sconces, which they're beautiful. They're amazing. The, we did a great job picking them up. But we didn't account that we were going to have a wall right there. And if you notice, this is this has got some, some size to it. I mean, it's the size of my head. I have a big head. It was intended to go right here. But if you remember our green line here on the floor, that's a wall. Which is also where our plumbing comes up. Which means there's holes in the ground. Yeah. Because, which, you know, the wall, but... Which means that has to be moved. But look at the difference between this one right here and this one that Chase already mounted. See how much space we have? We can't do that here. Unless we move our bathroom, which also means we cut a couple of different Two holes. Two more holes. Which then also misaligns our wall with the wall over here. Oh, I know. I think, I think we're gonna have to move the scones. But where? Problema numero dos huh? is right here. Chase made this wall without my knowledge, without asking me. I asked the, you, but not about that one plug. I wanted three plugs on the kitchen area. Who in their right mind puts a plug right here? You might be wondering, what is it? Well, this is our, our pot uh, filler, which means here's our cooktop, which means why would I need a plug right there? What are we gonna plug and burn? Men never cook, so they don't know where to put plugs. Not men, just Chase. Chase doesn't cook. <laughs> <laughs> so he doesn't know anything about plugs. Yeah, it is true. There's guys that cook really yeah, good. I mean, we know the scones has to be go there. Yeah. So let's mount it and whenever the time comes for the wall, we'll figure it out. Okay. Side note, how many of you, when you're doing laundry, how many of you do you find screws, bolts and stuff in your significant other pockets? For me it's screws, nails, uh bolts whatever he can fit in his pocket he will put plus chapstick uh. there's something about chapstick in this man <laughs> beautiful Tell me that it would not look better if this one is closer to. It would look better if that one were up. Baby, of course, but that's not an option. The only other option is doing it here. We'll, we'll move it. I'm not gonna do that right now. Someone mentioned a long time ago that when we were doing lights, they would like to see how we're actually wiring them up. So for each circuit that we have of lights all connected back to a single switch, um, we are literally just wiring all of the positives together 
and all of the negatives together, right? So there's not one particular positive that doesn't end up being connected back to the primary positive, okay? So this cable runs from one light to the next. Again, all positives connect to positive, all negatives connect to negative. Uh, they're all in a parallel configuration. I'm just gonna show you a couple of tools that I'm using. So I've got a wire ferrule crimper. It's got a bunch of different sizes that it crimps and I have tinned copper wire ferrules. You'll see what I'm doing with these. Of course, my wire strippers and then some heat shrink tubing because we wanna keep everything isolated. We don't want anything grounding out or touching uh, at any point. So Marese brought up a really good point here. What do you do when you have two wires? So again, all of our positives go together. All of our negatives go together as well. So it doesn't matter if we have one wire or if we have five wires. So first and foremost, strip these. Again, strip them pretty well. I strip these a little longer than I would if I were using a uh, good heat shrink butt connector. Um, so about a half an inch, maybe a little more. Doesn't matter what type of light you're using. If it's 12 volt, there's gonna be a positive and a negative. So this is not specific to any particular light, but just make sure you know what uh, each color wire represents. A lot of times the product will specify. Here uh, it says neutral white and dim because this is a dimmable uh, light. Our black is our power. So we'll wire our power together. And then I bring the other one in and then the ferrule. Now this can be a little tricky to get on. You, you wanna make sure you get it on with all the strands inside the ferrule. And again, we like to keep it hanging out a little bit, right? So we make our first initial crimp. And truthfully, that would probably be good enough, but I'm an overdoer and I like a really tight connection. So then I come back in and I really put the crimp on it. We push this on. Press to close our end. Ooh, spicy. I guess it's time. Let there be light. Wow. Wow. And that's what all the bathroom was. Or the hall. Wow. Well, it's safe to say we've got enough light to work inside now. That's awesome. This is awesome. Woo! Bye, Joe Higgins. Have a glorious tea.